My friend, my friend, today we're going to be doing Terrapin Station by the Grateful Dead. Uh, this predominantly is going to be in the key of G major, makes a quick modulation to the key of D, and does a little minor groove and G's roll to minor E for a while. The chords associated with this, of course, G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished, or F sharp diminished in its true form, and then G. When we play the opening lick, we are, however, going to be playing it through the eyes of F major. We're going to have a F, A, C, D, C. We can move that to the secondary form here. Play our pinky on the A string at the 8th fret. We're going to be moving through that so we have G, F at the end there. And then the one that you predominantly hear on the record is going to be... Oh, the way at the 10th fret. It's going to be all these notes up top. You're going to go through it and then put the pinky down a minor third away on the B. All of them kind of work. And all together they sound really good in case you're playing with a bunch of different people. When it gets through that last one, it does the boo, 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 boo. Does a half step walk up to the G major. That's where we begin. Let my inspiration flow, talking rhyme, suggesting rhythm. So when we're playing these chords, there are a little couple caveats. Let's check them out. G major, I play in my secondary fingering so I can easily access my first finger on the first fret for the F note, hit the A, and then I play my D note with my pinky, so I have the choice to throw down my third finger for the minor third, the F natural, if I want to. Playing it like that is super, so I do a real quick hammer on, play the C major, play both the C and the E note as a hammer on, and then I play the G major and do both the C and the E as a hammer on as well before going to the F. Once making the F, I do the quick lick, and then go up to the C, then back to the F. Here's where the lady's first solo lick comes in. It's gonna look like this fast forward, then I'll break it down. Ah. The point is to go from three, five to seven, three, five to seven, play the five, hit the six on the B note, come back a half step or a minor second, when we play with these fingerings, we are centering around a chord structure which has already been uh, devised by our cage system. If that doesn't make sense, check out the channel or Google the cage system. You'll love it. Okay, the secondary note that we're going to be doing there just replicates our intro riff. Then back in the groove. While the fires and lights are glow, strange shadows from So that middle part has a little awkward rhythm there. Shadows forming, winds both fair and swarm down Carlisle. It has a feeling of going If you're counting it straight on quarters, it actually is very simple. However, if you're trying to do the inflection that Jerry Bird does, you're going to feel like that alternating eighth going up and down. It's a quick fill. Goes through that the whole time. You know this song. When it gets through all the way to a sailing game, at least a try. Soldier 
should be much too wise. His strategy was his strength, not disaster. We're going to be going through that here. It sounds just like this. Does that four times? Last time, I think it rises. Up. Has a different amalgamation. I would probably play it up here because I hear two voicings on that. That uh. Makes its way down a minor and then ends by playing the F major. So the minor it's utilizing is the D minor there, the F major's relative minor. When it drops down, it falls on a F major seven. Now you can play the F major seven a couple different ways. A big old bar and then playing both these notes right in the middle on the D and the G string and then playing the C would give you your F major seven. But the one that we traditionally play is just our first finger, second finger, and third finger down on the correlating B, G, and D strings, leaving the E open for the natural seven. Sorry, that uh, diminished seven. Nice. So when we play those two, the next chord we're going to play after that is with the words. We're going to have, since the end is never told. We're going to play our E, our C, and then let our finger play the rest of all of those notes. Now, you can use multiple fingers. It just feels really good to do this. Since the end is never known, we pay the E major. The, and hit a real hard E up here to get the low note and let it ring out. At that point, you have found yourself getting into the Terrapin Station. Um, what I like to do is just have my E here in uh, first finger on the A, and then skip the D string and play the G string. We get the low E, we get the E here, we mute with the back of the finger that's holding that, and then we play the either here or here. I like to use my pinky for stuff like this on five chords. So we're playing this... Playing with E, D, B. Sometimes we go to the E to the F sharp. So you can see how we're doing E, F sharp, G would be kind of like inside the major scale. So we're moving around with that because we're playing over an E major. When we feel this, we're going to have this. Last time it goes E, D, D, and then it, we find ourselves back to the E major. Count, ding, A, stars by candle, E, light, C sharp minor, all a dim but one is D major, right? I add the F here, go to the E major, spiral light of Venus, A, rising first and shining best, E, O, A. Northwest corner, E, C sharp minor of a brand new B, crescent D. Moon. It says a D sharp minor seven with a five. Now I hear this chord more of a D, um, did I say D flat? No, D sharp minor works. D major, D minor, D minor in second fingering, D sharp minor. That would leave us with this and you could bar up the whole thing. I like taking my fingers and throwing the D major here the first time, putting that aforementioned F in, jumping here to the D at the fifth, and then I lay down a secondary finger, the middle finger, on the sixth fret of that E flat, D sharp. I do an improper phrasing moving here, you'll see why, because I add the seventh. First, minor, third, seventh, pop up top here. You guessed it. We're gonna be playing like a D sharp minor seven and you could choose to add that flat five or not. I don't, I don't think I hear that uh, that augmented kind of chord. So, whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, from the northwest corner of a brand new crescent moon. Nice.
back to E. Crickets and A, cicadas D. Do it again. E, brand different moon. D and A, terrapin station. B minor, in the B minor, A major, E. Again. Go all the way to the top. In the shadows of the moon, Terrapin Station. And I know we'll be there soon. Find our way back to E. This is where we jump up to this cool little thing we were talking about earlier. This E chord. Terrapin, I can't figure out. You're going to mimic the Terrapin riff we just looked at. Terrapin. the outro D. same movements like the E F sharp E and D well we're doing that with D C D and E now when it holds out on that D it goes D C B C B A G G G A A A the First time through in the Terrapin riff for the Terrapin Station outro, we're going to hold octaves here on the A and here on the A note. Same thing we were talking about. And if you're not uh, privy to this, the way octaves work is we have, like, say, with the A right here on our bass string, the E at the 5, we're going to go all the way up to the D string and then go up a major second from that note. Here's a minor second, two minor seconds, equal A, major second. Whence playing the finger here and finger here, you get two A notes. They are perfect A's. One is 880, one is 440. This one is the low one, has a frequency like this. The top one is just the same frequency with double the oscillations. So when we're playing this note and we go up here, you can see how this works. We're just doubling up our octaves and giving overtones. What we're going to be doing is playing down a whole step. We're going to move all of our shifting all the way up. So we went A and we dropped it right back down. See how we went from the A to the G there? So A goes to G, and then we're going to go up here, and we're going to be playing on this note, right? So we have a C, right? We're going to play C down to a B, the same notes we were using for the walk down getting out of this, and play all the way through so we hit the G again and go up to A. Here's what it'll look like. And then we land up on the D. That's where it takes us again to the... working up that same uh e d c d c b c b g g a a a the first riff is what we just did sorry boop, boop. the second riff is the most memorable um riff i learned besides maybe help on the way as far as <laughs> uh or a franklin's tower or something like that maybe slipknot slipknot is very intricate however the same kind of phrasings you use for Slipknot are the same kind of phrasings and fingers you would use for this. Catch this. This is so amazingly fun. So after doing that... The second time we go through... Has 7th fret, 7th fret. We're playing our 3rd finger and our pinky. And then we're going to play up on the 5th fret of the G, go down a half step to the 4, play the 5 on the D string, go all the way to that same 7th, skipping a finger and a fret so it feels comfortable. Uh, then we're going to play 5 on the A string for a D note, play its major 3rd, the F sharp, go all the way to its 5th, the A. And then the last thing we're going to do is move our finger forward a half step and follow that all the way down from the 5th fret on the D to the 7th fret on the A to the 8th fret on the E. And then we're going to do it with the famous lick, the double back E, and then pop up here to the C, and then drop down to the D, no, A, A, dum, ba, dum, all together. Flat or D sharp D. Do the same movements we've been doing. doing. They alternate back and forth.
and forth between this, I think, four times. The secret to doing those and keeping your fingers here, you just think perfect, uh, I'm sorry, uh, minor third. And then feel octaves. You will move and concentrate on one finger. And the other finger will just move with it because that's about as far your finger will go. You'll train it to have that mechanism. It's just a shell. Same thing you would do with the piano. So after doing that, you're going to have that last time of doing a... favorite parts is too. I don't have a slide on me, but I do have my faithful Bic. Um, when we do this, I'm going to start here at the 10th fret on the B string. Now you want to stay over it once and then rise that all the way up from the 10th fret and then go up to the E and play the 15th on the top of the fret. What I mean is towards the front of it, towards the 16th. And then slide forward and then slightly back and then drop back to that same 10th fret. It has a little alteration. So you're doing like a 15, 16, 15, 13, 12. And then right back to that 10. And then go up a half step. Now what's happening underneath there is there is a D major. Do. coming up, but we're hovering in D until that happens. There's a quick movement going. Just hinting at it. So because both of these are major chords, what we're looking at are two very similar modes. You can use modal scales like the whole tone, half tone scale series. You can kind of use Locrian if you omit the sixth. And you could use just your Phrygian, which sounds super groovy over the top of this. And you could play around with Dorian, which means any of these modes that we mentioned are either the minor modes over the top of it. Pick the relative minor of the key. We're in D, so play a B, B Dorian. Boom, you're right there. If you're in the key of... Uh, uh, e flat major, you can play. I mean, think about it. E flat major here, we would have C minor. So C minor sounds awfully good over the top of that when we're playing through it. Yay. Uh, other than that, it's going to come out of the Terrapin station, go out to the um, while you were gone part. That's where it does uh, after they do, 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 do. The, you have to walk it down so it has. And the notes. into the um, the next Terrapin transit part. D is gonna go really slow. Like this. The, the words aren't, they're very spacey. While you were gone, these faces filled with darkness. Obvious was hidden with nothing to believe in. Compass always points to pin. Goes through this over and over and over again. The next thing, it kind of has like a bridge in between there. Still keeps with the E flat. Sullen wings of fortune, like the beaded rain. Go back in Terrapin for good or ill or good. Or -na 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 -na. Goes that, does it, a, uh, I think like uh, 24 measures. And then it jumps back into the C. So after it does the last thing, for, for ill or for good. And then it has this kind of like feeling where it does here's where the drum solos go while the drummer that you're playing with or if you're just doing by yourself you can carry on a really cool beat and do taka 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 two fingers and then lay down the other finger for the next eighth note that helps carry the beat it's a subdivision of it and what we're going to find is that 
One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, six. One, two, three, four, five, 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 six. After six times, it does an eighth note only one time in the entire recording. And then it goes back to the single. Ends on that D. That's when it goes into the uh, the G part. So you're gonna go to G. It's gonna hover in G. Then it's gonna move up to A minor. Rather than playing an open chord, I like to play the bar chord here because it allows me to do the. And use pentatonics, you know? Here we go. All these pentatonics, the, the note that does that. So the G is G Ionian. The A is going to be the natural minor. And if you want to throw Dorian, it works really well. Uh, and then when it goes up to the B, it does the same thing. Then it goes back to the A. And then what we hear, because A minor and C major are essentially the same thing, one guitar plays A minor, while the other, other guitar part does the one, two, three, four, five, six, um, well. Does this a couple times over and over again, and then the last time does da, da, holds out that D, and then it just does the last final lick. This happens four or five times, and then the last time they just end with a big fanfare finale. That is 22 minutes of Terrapin Station. I hope this helps somebody in the journey. Yeah, you can go out there and look for the solos and the uh, the actual notation. I applaud you. Uh, if you got through this whole video, please put a thumbs up in the comment section. I'd like to see who, who lasts through a 22-minute dead video. Aloha.